Hi, everyone, and welcome. We're very excited to bring you another episode of Face to Face, an educational webinar series for nonprofit, church, and volunteer management leaders. Today, we're joined by Patty Gentry, the Director of Volunteer Engagement and Mobilization at March of Dimes, and our interviewer and host, Liv Carter, Verified First Marketing Manager, to discuss Going Beyond, Aligning Values and Missions to Build Volunteer Advocates. Before we begin, let's discuss some housekeeping items. To view past face-to-face -face episodes or register for an upcoming event, please check out our face-to-face -face webinar page on our website at verifiedfirst.com. Additionally, at the end of this webinar, we'd love for you to stick around and fill out our post-webinar survey. There, you can provide feedback to our team and request future face-to-face -face webinar topics. During this webinar, we want you to utilize the chat function to ask our speakers any questions you'd like them to discuss. To prepare, let's practice now. In the chat feature, let us know where you're tuning in from and if this is your first time attending a webinar with Verified First. Awesome. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Logistics, for making this episode possible. Now, without further ado, take it away, Liv. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. And it looks like we have quite a bit of people from across the country, which is really awesome to see. Um, I am Liv Carter, and I'm the host uh, for today's face-to-face -face interview. I'm quite excited to have the opportunity to sit down with Patty Gentry for a discussion on going beyond aligning values and mission to build volunteer advocates. We'll be exploring the power and value of aligning mission and volunteer values to further community impact. Now, I want to, before we kind of jump in, I want to introduce Patty. Um, so, Patty, uh, you are the Director of Volunteer Engagement and mobilization at the March of Dimes. Can you share a little bit about what you do, what you're passionate about? Yeah, so hi everyone. I'm really excited to be here with you today. I have worked in the nonprofit sector for over 16 years, working with youth, volunteers, um, donors, key stakeholders through a lot of different things, whether it's events or activations or digital campaigns. And I've worked on a lot of different issues over those 16 years um, and with different sized organizations serving in a lot of different roles, whether it was communications or fundraising or program management or youth or volunteer engagement. And so I've been with March of Dimes since 2019 as the Director of Volunteer Engagement and Mobilization, where I get to pull all of that experience together, which is really exciting. I get to work with our national service partners. We have 18 national service partners across the country. These are civic organizations, fraternities, sororities, as well as with our volunteer leaders and volunteers to advance um, the fight for the health of all moms and babies. And I'm also a positive psychology practitioner. I received my certificate in applied positive psychology through the Flourishing Center. And this is really about human flourishing. So finding meaning and purpose and living in the alignment of your values is a part of that, which makes me excited for this conversation today. It's really this intersection of individual values and organizational values that's, that sort of overlap is the sweet spot of volunteer engagement in my opinion it's where as a volunteer manager you can really see the impact of values-based volunteerism through the impact that your volunteers are making for your organization but also how it is to work with those volunteers and so needless to say i spent a lot of time thinking about my own values how they've evolved and how i can better align my own personal values with how i give my time my talent and my treasure and how we at March of Dimes can connect volunteers with our organizational values to make a greater impact. So I'm excited to be here again today and also to learn from all of you all and through your experiences that you've had. Yeah, Patty, I am so excited for this conversation. Time, talent, and treasure, we will, we will dive into that more. I love uh, I love that saying and uh, audience, I know Patty you and I kind of discussed like we would love this to be a um, a 
inclusive event. So feel free to submit questions. We want to hear your opinions. We want to hear your thoughts uh, and your questions for Patty. And um, I'm sure, like she said, she would love to learn from you. I'm learning as well. So uh, we would love this to be a dynamic conversation and include you all in the audience today. Now, uh, Patty, why don't we why don't we get started? I'm I'm too excited. Sounds great. <laughs> awesome. So I want to start off by talking about mission and vision. And I think you know everyone kind of has their own definition of mission and and vision, vision statement, vision statement, and the differences between the two. Um, in your eyes and kind of your experience, what to you is the difference between an organization organization's mission and their vision? Yeah, so I, I think it's relatively simple, right? The mission is the organization's current objective, whereas the vision is where the organis organization really is aspiring to go. And so for March of Dimes, this looks like our mission is lead the fight for the health of all moms and babies, where our mission, our vision rather, is we imagine a world where every mom and baby is healthy, regardless of wealth, race, gender, or geography. Um, but in addition to sort of those two definitions, I also think that the definition of what it means to volunteer is evolving. So <laughs> point, of, point of Light is a really um, a, an organization, obviously, in the nonprofit space. There might be folks who are joining us from that organization. One of the quotes that I saw at a, as a part of their most recent conference was, civic life today requires that we look beyond traditional labels like volunteer and empower people to express their desire to do good in ways that are meaningful to them through the purchases we make, through how we vote, through what we share on social media, where and how we choose to work and what causes they choose to support with their time or money. So I see this in our work um, where our volunteers are advocating, they're donating, there, we're really trying to work with them to volunteer and advocate to donate to be all of those things and really support organization in ways that are truly meaningful to them. And I'd also be really curious to hear, you know, from those in the audience, are you also seeing this within your own organizations, right? So I've personally always given back, but as I learn and understand more about how the world works or doesn't work in most cases, I've really started to, to look at how I can just notice what makes me angry and learn about it, but also how that might impact how I personally give of my time, talent, and treasure as well. So I know that that's also true for me. Yeah, yeah, super interesting. And that, that goes back to, to your study on positive uh, psychology, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, super interesting. Um, audience, if you have any thoughts or, you know, if you've kind of uh, noticed the same thing, we'd love to hear it. Um, and Patty, thanks for kind of distinguishing the two. So um, kind of present versus future tense. Um, you know, given one's kind of more current, one's futuristic, how did the two work together to kind of guide an organization that has volunteers, right? How does it guide kind of what they do with volunteers potentially? Yeah, I mean, the mission really focuses us as an organization around the impact we're really trying to make today and focus us in on the sort of population that we're trying to serve. So leads the fight for the health of all moms and babies, right? We focus on moms and babies um, and we want to be at the forefront of that fight. Our vision, right, um, really is sort of the future case of where we see our moms, babies, and families. It's our North Star. It's what we can hold as our North Star to say, okay, what are the plans and strategies that we need to put in place to get towards that greater vision? Right, um, right. So that's that's really how those pieces work together. Yeah. Now, is is one more valuable than an other than the other when communicating to you know volunteers or staff? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think they're both equally as important and. I am the type of person, I'm sort of a big picture thinker, but I can also really wrap my head around the small details. And for me, it's really important to hold that vision, right? Where are we going as an organization? Why am I doing the work now? And how do I really look at the work that we're doing now? And through that lens of the vision to, to make sure that I'm like building something that moves our volunteer program to the future. Right. Yeah. See, so that's that's really interesting. I, I volunteer quite a bit, too. And um, 
I think the organizations that I've stayed with longer, they've provided that vision of where the organization's going and where the the long term uh, kind of need or solution is right versus uh, those that I, I fell in love with the mission, but maybe serve just one or two or a few times versus long term. And I, I know we're going to talk more about, you know, one time volunteers versus long term and kind of combining the two. But I was just curious if you saw maybe one's more valuable than the other in, in your experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think it also depends on the individual volunteer. I think everybody is a little bit different in how they resonate with the cause or a mission. And so Liv, when you yeah. went through that process for yourself, you were connected to the cause out of interest or, or whatever that might meant, something felt meaningful to you. But what made you stay was that vision. And for other people that might look a little bit different. So they might be yeah. more interested in the, the direct impact that they're able to make today. And maybe that bigger vision is a little bit confusing. confusing. Um, and if it is, as an organization, we we can make that a little bit more clear for our volunteers. But um, I think it's it's probably a little bit different for different volunteers who are engaging with your organization. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great call. And so, Patty, I'm curious with your experience. Um, how do you see, you know, volunteer engagement tying in with uh, an organization's mission and vision? Is there kind of an alignment between or a correlation there? Yeah, I mean, I think it it's it's the first impression of an organization to our volunteers, right? So we're clearly stating who we are as an organization, what we do, who we serve, where we're going, and what we believe in. That is a lot easier for volunteers to find themselves in the work that you're doing as an organization. And so one of the things we actually do as an organization is we go a little bit further to define our own core values and our organizational sort of values, right? So we are really clear about how that translates into what it looks like on our website, what it looks like on our social properties, what it looks like as we train our volunteers and how our volunteer leaders then work with and train other volunteer leaders. So like I said, this is oftentimes the first impression. And if it's not clear what your organization does, then um, it might it might not bring those volunteers into your organization. Right, right. It, and, you know, we didn't talk about this, uh, but kind of you, you brought in March of Dimes. Um, what does communicating the vision and the mission look like? you know amongst your your volunteers i'm just curious a lot of trainings okay. yeah <laughs> um no i mean i think it what it looks like really is looking at how we communicate externally right so what are volunteers seeing both outside of the organization and inside of the organization so we spend a lot of time developing templated decks or templated resources that our mission, our vision, our priorities as an organization, their roles and how that could be um, implemented in the community are all baked in so that we're always leading with mission, we're always leading with vision, and we're always leading with the issue that we're trying to solve, how our organization is solving that, solving for that, how we're a critical piece of that, and also how our volunteers are a part of that as well. Hmm. Hmm. And that with helps. March, of, yeah. No, that that definitely helps. I was I was curious, you know, because PDF slide decks, training, you know, all of the above, and I'm sure with uh, the size of March of Dimes, it probably is a whole, you know, iteration just continuously uh, growing, and it's probably all about consistency, right? Because you have yeah. uh, volunteers on on all different levels across the <laughs> across the country, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, and I would add to, I think probably some of the folks who are on this call have known March of Dimes over the years. So it was founded in 1938. Um, the look and the feel was very different from the look and the feel of the organization probably in the last 10 years. So that consistency on who we are as an organization, what our mission is, what we aspire to do, i.e. our vision, and how we go about doing that are something that we are always talking about 
um, and being consistent through our communications, through how we communicate and train our volunteers, and also how we ask them to represent our brand and communicate what we do as an organization. Right, right. Yeah, reemphasizing that consistency all the way through what you're asking them. Um, Eileen here in the chat uh, stated, the vision is why we do what we do. Uh, yeah. And I think that's that's really awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Eileen. That's great. So, Patty, I want to transition. I think this is where we'll spend the, the bulk of our time. Um, I want to transition to talking about nurturing volunteers and, and building those, uh, those volunteer advocates. Um, now, research has shown 66% of volunteers are motivated to volunteer in order to improve their community, their local community, um, and 83% do so uh, to contribute to a specific cause also, so something that they specifically care about or are connected to. Um, what, what does it mean for an organization to invest or um, pay attention to a volunteer's motivation? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've all worked with volunteers who've been engaged and we've all worked with volunteers who have been less engaged. And so they may have a personal connection to the mission. They might not, but we've also worked with volunteers, like I said, that have been just less engaged. And so organizations rely on volunteers to support their work in the community. So if a volunteer isn't motivated, oftentimes we know that um, they are unreliable. They're not showing up. And that directly impacts the work that we all can do, right? Especially in those longer term roles. And that's why communication is really important and taking the time to connect with that volunteer motivation, really understanding what's truly meaningful to them about your mission, about where you're going as an organization. Like I even said, what, what the why we do what we do, what are they connecting to as a volunteer and really get to know them and get to know um, that why. I think, People commit and show up more if they feel more connected to the people that they're working with and the organizations that they're working for. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm curious, you, you mentioned understanding that why. Have you kind of, have you figured out any tips and tricks to understanding the why? You know, is it on an application for, you know, a volunteer position or is it through conversation? I'm just, I'm curious. And maybe our audience, if you've, got some suggestions on how you're understanding the why of your volunteers, go ahead and drop them in the chat too. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's a conversation. We okay. really just ask the question, um, what's meaningful to you about this work or what's meaningful to you about volunteering with us as an organization? And then we just listen um, and pay attention to what's going on in their lives and, and just ask those questions. Uh, we don't have a, a volunteer application for most of our volunteer opportunities. It really is just connecting with our team and our team of folks who are working on those events or opportunities, or if it's a volunteer leadership role, really connecting with those staff or other volunteer leaders to see if it's the right fit. Um, so oftentimes it's just having that conversation. Yeah, so yeah. much value in listening, <laughs> right? <laughs> listen, I always remind myself, listen with, and listen for, right? So you're listening with what they're saying. You're not thinking about how you're going to respond, but then you're also just listening for those pieces of connection, right? So what's going to resonate um, or what can you mirror back to them and what they're saying so they feel seen and they feel heard? Yeah, yeah, I love that. Listen with, listen for, love that. I, I'm going to have to write that down because that's good. Uh, <laughs> and that's not mine. I think that's in that's in a lot of like communications so, books. Yeah. And, um, no, that's that's great. And I so I want to talk a little bit more about the why I want to talk about. You mentioned it earlier, time, talent and treasure. So I think for our audience, you know, if you can just share what what that um, what that means, what that looks like uh, in your opinion. In terms of a volunteer's why? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think so, like, I think a few of our volunteers come to mind in terms of just their own stories. So I won't name names, but I got to know a volunteer who uh, 
experienced a loss of a child. And from that conversation of just understanding this tragedy that the person had gone to gone through and their ability to share their story, even with me, um, was a moment to, for me as a volunteer manager to say, how do I, how do I take this person's why, right? They were telling me why they were interested in March of Dimes and uh, what they were sort of interested in doing and how do I connect that to advocacy opportunities or sharing their story or volunteering on behalf of things that connect to them in a meaningful way. And in this case, it was, you know, the path forward was working on our doula programs. Um, that was something that helps decrease outcomes of loss. It helps decrease maternal and infant mortality. And so that was something that was both meaningful to her, connected to her initial why, and also allows her to be a volunteer for the organization. And hopefully that's something that she'll continue to be a volunteer in the future or evolve to find something more different or meaningful in a different way in the future. Yeah. Oh, that I, I love hearing that. And I was going to ask, like, you know, if there had been any experiences of of taking a conversation and, and putting it into action and truly investing in that volunteer. And that was a, a perfect example, Patty. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. We do. We do have a, a or comment here. Eileen said, um, we put a question on our application about why they are drawn to our organization and why they want to volunteer, um, both in general and specifically with our organization. So Eileen, thanks for sharing that. That's, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, so Patty, I want to talk about what does it mean to build a volunteer advocate? What does that look like in, in your eyes? Yeah, so it's it's partially that story that I just told. I also think about another volunteer that is less connected to our actual mission. Um, and it really is about sitting down with them, listening to why they wanna be involved in your organization, taking those responses that you receive in your application and reading them and taking that into account and how you connect them with your volunteer opportunities and whether it's a, a way that they can do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising or donate to your organization or connect to a specific advocacy initiative right or connect to a specific volunteer opportunity that might be more impactful to them um, whether it's short term or long term i think that's really how i think about building volunteer advocates is just sitting with those volunteers and taking the information that i'm receiving from them and thinking about the holistic world of March of Dimes or even beyond March of Dimes and how I can connect them to a cause that's gonna be meaningful to them, even if it's not March of Dimes, even if we're not the right fit for them as an organization is figuring out another pathway for them to get connected uh, to volunteering. Right, yeah, and that was gonna be a question I was gonna ask, you know, what if you, um let's say you've got like volunteer students or, you know, their families volunteered always and they come in kind of that route, but they don't necessarily have that, that personal connection per se. Um, how do you kind of address, you know, maybe their values um, don't entirely, you know, match up to what the organization has mission wise, vision wise. Um, you kind of mentioned maybe if it's not a good fit, do you find another organization? Do you kind of help, um, you know, find a spot internally or what does that kind of look like? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it depends. With our student yeah. volunteers, we do have pathways. Um, you know, with student volunteers, we know that it's really important for them to have professional development or leadership opportunities as a part of their volunteerism oftentimes, or at minimum, you know, those service, those service learning hours. And so finding those, we call it do-it-yourself or virtual fundraising opportunities that they can lead in their own time and get service learning hours for, or connect them to opportunities where they can take on more of a leadership role to build their own fundraiser to serve as a volunteer leader. Um, if they're in the right sort of place in their life, we always welcome youth volunteers as a part of our leadership structures. Um, 
just to make sure that we have a variety of perspectives at the table. We also have a collegiate council too that can connect with folks um, at the student level. But I would think, I think like the sort of thing that always comes to mind is the the why is probably not always connected to the mission, right? And so as a volunteer manager, sort of my job in a lot of ways to connect why they're interested to a volunteer opportunity. So I'm I'm trying to figure out, you know, if they're interested in professional development or if they're interested in just gaining experience where they can't get it in a company setting. Um, here are opportunities and ways to do that that could be short term or could also be long term. And I think in our work, what we see oftentimes is people will start with our organization, maybe as a student volunteer, and their why means something completely different. Right. They're not thinking about pregnancy. They're not even thinking about family planning. And they we get them to really think about who in your life might be connected to our mission so that they have something outside of themselves to connect to that personal side. So that that mission connection. And then we check in with them. Um, how has it changed? We see a lot of times when people have their first child or their first birth experience or a miscarriage, their meaning and their why changes uh, for our organization, right? So we see that change over time. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting, the uh, volunteers why and kind of their, their personal connection to the organization changing over time. Is there, are you having, you know, uh annual discussions with your volunteers or uh annual reviews or anything like that you know i tend to think with my like employee and and manager hat versus you know volunteer management so um i'm just curious what does that look like to kind of continue that journey with them uh for those long-term volunteers yeah for longer-term volunteers um for our like market board volunteers, as well as our committees, we tend to do individual engagement plans and check in with them sort of officially once a, once a year. But I think we always encourage, and I personally are in constant communication with the volunteers and the groups of volunteers that I work with, right? So um, the example around our National Collegiate Leadership Council is we talk about our why in the very first council meeting of the year and we bring people in to share what their why is with the organization and how that's evolved over time and just really ask that question throughout the course of their service um, but again officially with our volunteer leaders we try to do that through individual engagement process um, right. through an iep yeah yeah kind of a more personal uh connection constantly yeah um, it should never really be a shock <laughs> um, hopefully, <laughs> especially with our volunteer leaders who are giving so much of their time to the organization, um, just how they're connected to the work that you're doing or the work that they're doing, rather. Right, right. Um, so we do have a question, and I think it kind of ties into to volunteer engagement and, and management. Rachel's wondering uh, what volunteer management software uh, you guys use if you're willing to share or maybe just speak to kind of how a technology platform or solution kind of helps you with volunteer engagement or management yeah it's funny um because so when i started at march of dimes in 2019 there wasn't any sort of tracking which for an organization who is volunteer driven and staff supported a lot of this work was done just through spreadsheets, through our local staff, through our local markets, um, through our national teams. And um, currently we use Golden. That was one of the main initiatives that I took on when I first started because we needed a real we needed a way to start to get that buy-in, right? So we knew we were working with all of these volunteers across the country. We knew generally all about them through our staff. But it was hard to tell the story of the impact of our volunteers and so getting that getting that system in place was a priority for us as an organization because we needed to do this in a way that was a little bit easier than a spreadsheet um, because mm -hmm. we do a lot of different types of volunteer opportunities um, we do a lot of different types of volunteer leadership opportunities and 
Golden is what we use. It's not um, a solution for board management currently, but it does help us sort of create and manage volunteer opportunities and our everyday volunteers for various campaigns, events, and just opportunities sort of ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I I would have never guessed the the spreadsheets initially. Just I was also stockings. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of spreadsheets. I'm sure. <laughs> or was. Well, and I think too. Um, one of the things that we saw within our work is just like any organization, you have staff turnover. So as right. new staff are coming into these positions, those volunteer spreadsheets aren't getting transferred over to the new staff. So can feel like you're in constant rebuild mode, right? Figuring out who are our volunteers in this community? How do we get this work done? Um, can be very frustrating, right? It's necessary, yeah. but it can be very frustrating to volunteer, volunteer managers who are running events or who are running programs or who just need people to support the work that they're doing at the community level it can feel can feel very frustrating if, if you've lost that contact information right yeah no doubt and uh i think uh patty now's a good time to launch launch our our poll question that we kind of ask every every face to face so if this isn't your first uh face to face webinar then you know we ask this question as part of our um annual research uh, so this one is, what areas of volunteer management systems do you need help with in the next 60 days? Uh, Voltistics being one of those volunteer management platforms, volunteer recruitment, retention, screening, e-giving, fundraising, that's been a, that's been a trend there. Um, Patty, now we know technology does not solve everything, right? Um, especially, you know, it might help reduce the number of sheets. Uh, but it doesn't doesn't solve for those one to one conversations and uh, and those, you know, understanding the why all the time. Um, I'm just curious. Do you have a, a guess or an educated guess on which uh, which of the items are going to be kind of top one or top two? I feel like it's going to be e-giving fundraising because that's something we always need as nonprofit organizations and getting our volunteers that's some of the biggest group of people who also donate or fundraise for your organization and then right. i'd say probably volunteer retention maybe or recruitment okay yeah let's, let's see let's, let's take a look i will share the results interesting okay so this is probably the lowest i've seen e-giving and fundraising which is interesting i I think that's a good sign. <laughs> that means uh, our audience hopefully has some some solutions in place. But look at volunteer recruitment and retention. Kind of the top two. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, Patty, have you experienced any of this volunteer recruitment or retention being a challenge? Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a constant a uh, constant thing um, yeah. that we're talking about and thinking about is how do you recruit more volunteers? How do you really share what your organization is doing, right? So when you're at a dinner party and people ask you, hey, what does March of Dimes do? Maybe you're not getting that question. You Hopefully you get to a point where you've shared so much information right. about your organization online and through social media that people know what your organization does and how to get connected to volunteer opportunities um that re volunteer recruitment piece um but the retention piece also a challenge you know i think when i i get very frustrated sometimes in the volunteer engagement space as i'm sure many volunteer managers do uh with attrition right i feel like volunteering is the one place in our lives where we feel like it's okay not to show up which baffles me um so you know obviously those are volunteers that we don't necessarily need to follow up with, but getting people to stay for the long term or just to show up to those short term volunteer opportunities um, and retain them over time is, is something that I'm always thinking about. Right, right. And I'm sure with with COVID that kind of changed things also and, and probably impacted uh, March of Dimes and a lot of our audience, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's a challenge to 
engage people in a virtual space, right? That's just challenging. We're not seeing people as much. I think we're mm -hmm. still sort of in COVID, but this post COVID mentality, I think personally what I've seen is that people still prefer virtual over in person, um, whether it's just meeting face, you know, having a, a conversation or meeting with a volunteer leader. Hey, can we do that over Zoom? Or hey, can we do that over the phone versus commuting to a central meeting place and finding time to connect with people in person? Um, mm. It definitely has continued to be a challenge. And there's different strategies, right? Like we have to communicate a lot more. We have to figure out ways to hold each other more accountable and be trans be more transparent about our roles and responsibilities and check in on those, I think, more frequently in the virtual space, whereas that face to face in person, seeing other people can oftentimes hold you more accountable. Um, so, right. Definitely a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about you're going to see that person again in person and you need to have that, you know, you need to show up. So um, you kind of mentioned uh, when you're talking about retention, long term volunteers, uh, one time, you know, we know not all volunteers kind of stay for the long haul, um, but it doesn't mean one time volunteers aren't helpful, especially with um, our audience. Some of your organizations probably have less resources, uh, less, less staff, less volunteers. So those one times can kind of uh, mean a lot. Patty, how do you kind of view short term versus, you know, one time volunteers? Yeah, for us, we like other organization need short term and long term volunteers. So short term for us as an organization, they tend to support collections on behalf of families or moms and babies or do it yourself at home virtual opportunities. <laughs> you know, that was very COVID time right. and still continues to exist. And also our events, um, our, our short-term volunteers tend to really help support our events or community events. Um, so the great thing is like these short-term volunteers can become your long-term volunteers that serve as volunteer leaders or connect others to your cause or share their story or fundraise and advocate like we were talking about before. So our goal is really to get both short-term and long-term volunteers. Hmm. Yeah. It, do you do you see a benefit uh, that short term or one time volunteers provide that maybe long term volunteers don't? I'm just kind of curious there. Hmm. A benefit of short term volunteers over long term volunteers. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they're there. They're showing up. They're supporting your organization. Um, it's it's something that you get to connect with people who are obviously somewhat connected to your organization. So for me as a, right. a volunteer manager, these are folks who are showing interest in your organization, right? So yeah. personally, I've had countless <laughs> experiences where I've volunteered for something where no one even took the time to ask me my name, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure other folks on this call, if they really thought about a time where they felt truly engaged in a short-term volunteer role. Um, they they would imagine that, you know, all of those different things, right? Like, I'll even pause if you want to just imagine it for a second where you felt truly engaged in a short-term volunteer opportunity. I don't think it was huge acts of recognition, right? It was right. just somebody taking the time to ask you who you are, look you in the eyes, say thank you so much for being here, and here's how what you're doing today connects to our organization. So oftentimes those short-term volunteers can give us, in a way of not saying it, direct feedback, right? If they don't come back, there's a reason for that. Um, it could be maybe they don't have enough time to dedicate to your organization, but it also could be that we didn't do a good job connecting with them when we had the opportunity in their volunteer role. So, um, right. Yeah, yeah, and Stephen here in the chat said it's unbelievable to unbelievable to think that there are volunteer leaders who don't learn volunteer names. It's a huge, yeah. it's huge for engagement. Yeah, yeah, I actually was I won't name the name of the organization, but um, <laughs> it shocks me every single time. And um, I I just volunteered with an organization where 
they asked us to arrive at a specific time. Um, the volunteer manager came in 15 minutes late, mm. asked us to start unloading everything, didn't like, you know, and I'm a volunteer manager trying not to take over anything. So I'm just sitting in the back, just <laughs> observing. But, um, you know, just launched into the project without organizing the volunteers or connecting with them, connecting them with other volunteers. And I think there's really simple things that we can do <laughs> um, to help people feel like they're connected to the work that they're doing, even the most mundane things, uh -huh. right? So it's, it doesn't have to be monumental, but helping people connect to, hey, I'm handing out these flyers or, hey, I'm handing out these packets. Here's the impact that makes to the bigger vision and the bigger mission that we have as an organization. Um, and hopefully right. that helps just deepen their engagement in the future for your organization. Right, right. Yeah. Can yeah, I like, that goes you just, Oh, go ahead. Keep going. No, I'm just going to say, I just was going to say that it, like, the worst opportunities are where you leave feeling like you've wasted your time or no one took a moment to get to know who you are or why you were here. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of time. Right. Yeah. I was, I was going to say basically that same thing, connecting again, the, the time that they're taking and the, the talent, the resources that they're providing and um, not just making them feel used. Right. Cause, and, and there's so much going on, right. Uh, volunteer yeah. managers, like so much respect for, for you all and handling and managing, herding the cats, you know, making things happen. Um, but there's something about communicating the impact, no matter how mundane or how small the task might seem, knowing uh, that that volunteer made a difference, even though it's not always easy to see on the surface level, uh, given what they're doing. I think that yeah. that's huge. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, I think about, I'm a volunteer leader at another organization and, um, you know, we do trash cleanups, right? This is a super simple volunteer opportunity. People are coming out early in the morning on Saturday morning to volunteer. I always take the time to, as they're coming up, connect with them. What's your name? I look them in the eye. We circle around and take a moment to say who we are to other volunteers, why we're here, um, and what about this is important to them? Like what gets them to show up at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning yeah. to do this volunteer opportunity? And I think it takes about, you know, depending on the size of the volunteer group, no more than five or 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. I walk them through the steps of the volunteer role. Like here's what you're gonna do here. You know, here's a bathroom if you need it. Um, it's just, again, it's just so shocking sometimes the, the lack of that in some volunteer opportunities when you know we don't spend just that five minutes uh just orienting people to the experience that they're about to have and to one another right. right yeah and how crazy that five to ten minutes what an investment that is long term which is really yeah. neat yeah so we have quite a bit of uh comments in the in the chat so i'm just going to read a couple but um Eileen shared, you know, long and short term volunteers appreciate knowing their impact. Uh, they like to quantify details in a thank you note, how many families they helped and, and so on. Eileen, I, I think that's that's great. And I've seen I've seen like some um, some numbers in like newsletters and things like that. Um, but a thank you note right after the event. That's that's great to hear as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, Eileen also mentioned short-term volunteers are a great networking opportunity. They have a lot of one-time corporate volunteers, but they become advocates in the community and help us build connections. Yep. That, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. Um, oh, so we have a question here from Millie, actually, uh, Patty. Um, Millie is restarting their volunteer program from scratch. She's navigating, uh, you know, trying to figure out the best way to start orientation or training. Um, do you have any tips or tricks for starting a su successful and or streamlined orientation and training? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the first tip I would say is to invite uh, some key volunteers around the table as you're creating your orientation experience. And I'm using the words create your orientation experience 
intentionally because it really is about creating that experience for your volunteers. Um, at March of Dimes, we sort of developed this like connect, um, I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head, but it's all C's. It's like connect something, collaborate, communicate, um, and give them a full experience of your organization, a full experience of what it means to volunteer for your organization, and really detail that out in a presentation or in how you train or your orientation, right? So orientation is the sort of meeting and onboarding is really that experience um, as they acclimate and get comfortable with what your organization is doing and what their volunteer role is um, and how that impacts the work that you're doing as an organization. Yeah, love that. Millie, great, great question. And um, we will have Patty's information at the end of today's event. You. Uh, want to reach out. Patty's been so gracious with that. Um, and you can and definitely use her as a re uh, resource. Um, we have a couple more questions regarding volunteer engagement uh, and those short term volunteers. Um, Mo said, we ask at the end of each shift, what was the best thing that happened today? Who was the coolest person you met? What brought you joy? Those are a couple of the questions. I think that is that is great. Oh, I and that. Eileen, yeah, right? Eileen, Millie said you can contact her after the session so we can connect you two. Um, love that everyone's able to use their resources here. Yeah, um, I'm happy to share too, like what resources we've created for our March of Dimes volunteers, if that's useful. Um, always happy to share those resources. And I think that's another good, if, if you're in a community where you can connect with other volunteer managers, I would say reach out to them, connect with them, see what resources they might have. Hopefully they're also willing to share those resources with you because we've probably all created different versions of our orientation, our job descriptions, <laughs> our, you know, decks while they're they should be different and reflective of your organization i think that there's common themes and common principles that uh, most volunteers would benefit from or perhaps we can learn from each other's how we phrase it or how we position it um yeah absolutely. to create a stronger program yeah right absolutely um and if you audience if you have tips and tricks go ahead and um again you can put them in the chat happy to share them out loud um, we also, at the end, uh, will have a QR code to a Facebook group that you can join that um, is also a community of volunteer management, uh, volunteer leaders, nonprofit leaders, so on. So that will be available too. Um, Patty, we have another question from Miranda. Um, they're a volunteer coordinator at a free resource center. And it's challenging uh, for them to make their volunteers feel the impact when the pile of donations keep getting bigger. Do you have any tips on how to keep volunteers motivated when it's hard to see the impact? Hmm. It's a great question. <laughs> yeah, tips for when it's hard to see the impact. I think what comes to mind is, is connecting them with other volunteer stories whether it is, you know, what we talked about before, why they're involved with the organization or who inevitably is going to receive those donations. So sharing the stories of the impact that your organization is making, um, helping them understand where those donations are going to, right? If they are piling up, uh, <laughs> maybe it's a conversation about what other, like what other donations are needed to support your organization and getting those volunteers and redirecting them to another area that is more in need than the, than the donations that you currently have or helping to get those donations out to the populations that you serve. Um, I hope that helps. I don't know if other folks, you know, in the audience yeah. have experienced that or might have, have ideas as well. Please do share that. Um, we can yeah. all learn from each other just in helping with that challenge. That definitely sounds like a tough thing yeah yeah great to hear the donations are piling up though that's that's awesome and i think that's one way people show their support and um teresa said the same thing patty uh i would share how the donations are being used so i think that's that's great um 
Now I just want to go into kind of our last topic. I know we're we're approaching time a bit more, but I want to talk about building um, buy-in and and building kind of uh, impact across your community through your volunteers and your mission. So, um, Patty, I'm curious, how can our audience advocate for programs um, to build volunteer advocates? What does that look like in in an organization? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it a little bit before, but just starting that tracking process, um, even with your current volunteers, just start tracking what they're doing, bake that into how you uh, think about future volunteer opportunities. How are you gonna track it? How are you gonna track the impact? What are you going to track, right? So I think leadership can really care about the return on investment from our volunteers. And that often translates into X number of volunteers or X number of foods, <laughs> meals distributed or care kits or books collected or what is the overall impact that those volunteers are making to reduce food insecurity as an example. I think the other thing is what we just talked about too, is just collecting and sharing those stories about the impact your volunteers are making, right? So um, there's the hard data, that's, there's also the soft data and both are equally really important in really creating a story around your volunteers and your volunteer program and um, work with those volunteers that are within your current sort of organization, even if it's just one or two that are supporting your work and have them start to develop out this this impact right um they can really help you shape that story and shape the impact that your organization that your organization may your organization is making from that volunteer's perspective right right and i imagine if you connect your those stories with your mission your mission and your vision of of where you're going and and kind of connecting that you know we're we're making progress to our vision i think that just makes it even stronger as well as you know having other advocates advocates kind of advocate for uh that as well is awesome um amanda also said make partnerships with other nonprofits. yes um yeah that's, yeah that's i would agree i think um that is a like a really great piece to think about. And one of the examples, even in March of Dimes work, for example, is um, we, so we know that nutrition is really important to mom and baby health, but we're not a food distribution organization nor are we a meal delivery service. Um, so we actually partner with an organization called Lasagna Love who, who does like neighbor to neighbor uh, meal delivery specifically lasagnas and so that's a volunteer opportunity that we promote to our volunteers as a way to get involved around uh, a sort of a connection to our mission um, but it's something that we don't personally have to stand up on our own right i think that's a really good point um, it's just connecting with those other organizations that can be an extension of the work that you're doing yeah yeah I think that's that's a great call out um, in the chat. Appreciate that and a, a great example, Patty. That's awesome. And despite March of Dimes being a larger organization, still using um, partnerships uh, and those resources available. That's awesome. Um, Patty, I know we're we're coming up on time, so I kind of just want to give you the floor to share any last remarks, um, any last thoughts. You know, we've got. Our audience ranges in, in size of organization, organization a number of volunteers and so on, but any kind of last thoughts on our, on our discussion today about mission and vision uh, and building volunteer advocates and community impact? Yeah, I mean, I think I would just close with, as individuals who volunteer, let your values guide your giving of time, talent, and treasure and as volunteer managers, really connect those volunteer values and motivations to get them more connected to your cause. I think if you can center that um, and create resources around that, there's gonna be a lot more quality volunteers versus just the sort of quantity of volunteers. Right, right, yeah. And potentially turning those short-term one-time volunteers into to longer-term advocates. I love that. Um, so. Patty, I, I want to kind of wrap up so that um, individuals have time to 
submit the post webinar survey, provide any feedback, any other questions for Patty there. Um, we will definitely pass them along to her, um, as well as we have our nonprofit and volunteer management community QR code there. If you would like to join that Facebook group, it is available there. Um, and I wanted to say, Patty, again, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I know this, you know, December can be a, a tricky time of the year um, with webinars, but I just really appreciate you uh, taking the time to have this discussion um, and kind of wrap up our first season of Face to Face. Yeah, and thank you for having me. It's truly been a pleasure. I've loved hearing from everybody in the chat and just learning from you all. And I hope that you're walking away with a piece of insight or a, a sort of a, re a reminder of something that you knew before um, and just appreciate being here. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to our, our lady in the wind to wrap us up and then uh, we will see you all in uh the new year for our next season of face to face thank you so much for joining us today we also want to thank logistics for sponsoring this webinar our fantastic guest speaker patty gentry the director of volunteer engagement and mobilization at march of dimes and our interviewer and host liv carter now, remember, we have a post webinar survey that will be launching in just a few seconds. There, you can provide feedback and request future face to face webinar topics. If you're tuning in on demand, check your email for the link. Thanks again, everyone, for joining, and we will see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Patty. Thanks.